welcome to the Palm Beach Casino for the Party Poker World Open 6. We started with 48 of the most exciting, innovative, and influential poker players in the world, and now we're down to the final seven. With a title up for grabs, reputations on the line, and $480,000 in the prize pool, there's plenty at stake for these poker pros. Sam Trickett, Toby Lewis, Yuha Helpy, Yevgeny Timoshenko, Dale Hoy, John Duthie, and Andrew Robel. One of these seven men will be the new champion of the Party Poker World Open. Very good bet. It's all part of the game, isn't it? If you made it bigger, I might. My plan is foiled. You got lucky. Now that good, I want to keep it. God. Can't really eclipse that. Should we all go home? Or? When people watch this at home, they're going to be like, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> There's nearly half a million dollars in prize money on the table with $200,000 for first place. Six of our players won the right to be here by prevailing over their eight-handed opening heats and one player had to battle twice as hard and comes to us through the runners-up game. With WPT, EPT and high-stakes cash game players at the table, there is sure to be some exciting poker. Everyone starts with 300000 in their chip stack. Good luck, gentlemen. Let's get the cards in the air. This is the final table of World Open 6. I'm thrilled to be joined here. Two players who played in this heat, one of them the defending champion, former champion now, Phil Locke, yes. and of course Mike Sexton. You guys both played in this, and so you know a bit about these, these players. Yep, I've played with all these guys before. And Mike, we've been watching a lot of this tournament, and then of course you were in the heat with Yuha Helpy. Strong final table, don't you think? <laughs> well, no question about it. A terrific final table. So much young talent out there. I've always had great respect for Yuha Helpy's game. The first day I ever saw the guy play when he won his WPT title. Now we've got Yevgeny Tamashenko out there who won the $25,000 buy-in world. <laughs> Poker Championship of the World Poker Tour, as well as Sam Trickett, who's the guy that's impressed me the most since I've come over here to Europe. Haven't seen him play that much, but he has wowed me when he won his heat. Yeah, I agree. Last year when we played this, Sam Trickett, me, and some others were taking breaks together, and Sam's going over the hands, etc. It was great. He saw stuff. And he's one of those guys who's just on a roll in form. And in the cash game we played that 36 hour, he was making sick calls for huge bets that were right with middle pair, etc. <laughs> That's right. I think he called fourth pair for 20,000 pounds yeah, against he did that. Pfeffer on the river. <laughs> that was his sick He one. actually <laughs> induced the... He the induced the bluff. Yeah. Sam Trickett, of course, the most successful Briton in the 2010 World Series of Poker. When I saw him win his seat, I could see why he won the most money of any Brent. This guy is a phenomenal poker player. Yeah, Mike, five Hush. British bracelets at the World Series of Poker uh, just this year. And the Young Guns, well represented. I mean, Toby Lewis just went in the EPT. You got Trickett. Yep. In the beginning of these heats, people are going to be willing to, like, look at flops but not commit too much afterwards. And you'll be looking at a lot more flops towards... Hush. After around 60 hands, the stuff starts getting a little spicy where people raise, re-raise, and then you realize you can only, you know, go all in or fold. So Hush. It'll, it'll be interesting. Well, already Trickett and Hoy have been the most yes. active. Well, they're picking up some hands here, in fairness to them. Yeah. But as Phil said. Correctly not defending out of position with ace suited. That's a horrible play, and he didn't do it. So I mean, it was pretty obvious, but we're all tempted to do it because ace suited looks good until you get raised. <laughs> <coughs> but like the 810 suited. Now that's now that that's <laughs> different. That's different. <laughs> well, you make a good point, Jesse. You're far much more likely to call with an 8-9 suited or a 7-8 suited than you are an ace suited because right. if the ace comes up, now you're in jeopardy if the guy yes. continues to fire at the pot, you think you're out kicked. So if you're going to call a raise in that spot, you'd far rather call a raise with the small suited cards rather than the ace suited card, ironically, as it sounds. Yep. Um, and then the exception to that rule is if there's like five people in, you definitely want to get in there with the ace rag suited because now you have a super durable multi-way hand. This one's fine, but a no respect. But these are going to be two no three-way pots typically. This is an eight-handed. I'm going to let you have Toby this Lewis picking up two nines. <laughs> Raising the pot. Pass. Comes in for 5,000. Very well. 
I can't wait to watch when John Duffy oh, starts fluttering his stuff because he's pleasure. the sickest one. <laughs> really? You know, and when he starts doing his stuff, like he's already thinking, how can I win this spot? He's already yeah. doing it. Oh, yeah. don't raise it up. But if he raises, raise. what does nines do? I mean, with this deep stack, I would just call. And now the face cards are going to come in, and Duffy might just try and steal it. It's tough. He's going to have a little smile here, Toby. I mean, at the end of the day, sticking in a four bet is really makes your hand kind of vulnerable, right? Oh, yeah. You have to call, right? Yeah, I would definitely just call here. And his problem is if one or two face cards come up, he's going to check, and the pot's going to get taken away from him. He's okay if baby cards come up. Now, Duffy will for sure fire. This is if he, Look at he's got that, like, I don't know what he, <laughs> And it's really hard, boy. You know, the typical the, the 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 typical line here is to just you call once and you see what the guy does in the turn. It, t sometimes it freezes your opponent if he has like you know, uh, ace king or whatever. And that's the typical line, I think. Phil, uh, in in his heat, when Praz Banzi was in here, and he was saying that John Duffy has more false tells than anybody in <laughs> poker. He's got the he's got the drinking the tea bluff, the stirring the drink bluff. He said he's got the whole thing. And he's picked up a gutter ball, so he'll probably check call or something. I don't know what he'll do. It's hard to predict. I see. I, I've never had the luxury of watching Duffy's cards as he's doing his stance. You know. Well, he didn't fire the second barrel. I mean, if you're Toby here, Mike, are you just trying to go to showdown, or do you want to... Keep the pot small. I would just check. I mean, Toby's uh, going to check. He's. I would think he's going to bet here, and really? I'll tell you why, yeah, because... Why is that? He's 21 years old. Because no. he's 21. <laughs> no, once Duffy is checked here, it's obvious to me he doesn't have a big pair in this right. spot. I would bet two nines here for sure in this spot. But if your opponent, let's say, had ace-jack, and you were to check, which, uh, I mean, I would do that, you're only giving him 12% to connect, you know, with the... You're only giving away 12% free roll. It's not that bad. And, I, mean, well, I would bet here if I was Lewis, and he bet also, thinking his hand is good. Now, if Duthie's got the moxie to come over the top of him with a check raise here, <laughs> he just <laughs> yeah. deserves a pot. Correct. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> He's just determined to be sick. Raised. He is, just he is determined check to be raised sick. here, and I'll tell you. <laughs> I love John Duffy. Now I, I would, love him. This I, knew I, I, I would it. throw the two nines away now. <laughs> and <laughs> you just have to salute a guy for getting out, out playing you. It's just that simple, folks. Yep. Once again, do you, when you're in hands with sick people, keep the pot small. You can't. <laughs> yeah. You just got to <laughs> defend again. Now, now, Toby might be an uber sick genius and just say, well, I did this just to trap him because I know he's sick. And, I mean, that would be like EPT <laughs> material right there. Oh, my God. He might you do You know, it. I'll tell you the truth. I'm already feeling better about my win against John Duffy. <laughs> Back in 2003, they had the Heads Up Championship of Europe down in Paris. Yep. Came down to me and John Duffy, heads up in that tournament, and I beat him. Everybody you, was making him a dollar fifty favorite this, or something against Toby's me. Toby's a genius. Well, this is an amazing call. And this, he, he might this have, is knowing your opponent right, right. here. This yeah. is totally You're absolutely right. He's putting him on some kind of A7 of hearts, or so. I don't know what he's putting him on, but just. Wow, and and uh, I mean, Duffy has to basically. There's, he's got a pot size bet left. Well, it is the only way out. He's obviously waving the flag if he doesn't bet here. Uh, and okay. he's giving it up. Well, I don't see any way. Okay. Lewis would be happy to check it down and win this pot with two wow. nines. A huge okay. pot out of the gate. But he deserves this pot for making that call on the turn look with at, the two nines. But the interesting, the, the, the interesting thing was Toby saw that John couldn't win through the, his body language and was a total gentleman about it and started to show even though he wasn't the one destined to show first according to the rules. I agree with you, Phil. I think these young British guys, Toby Lewis, there's Jake Cody, Sam Trickett, they're not only talented and aggressive, they're also gentlemen at the poker table. They're, they're classy to play with. Yeah. Well, nearly, I nearly did it. We're still seven-handed here, so join us after the break for more from the Party Poker World Open 6. Welcome back. I'm here with two of the greatest in the game, Sexton and Locke. And so he's John Duffy, Mike. When he's good, he's great. But when he's bad, he's awful. I'm wild. I'll tell you the truth. I We're mean, going to see uh, Duffy go into a quiet mode, I think, for a bit now. Right? He's going to have to. He's very short stack now. Yeah. 
after blowing off he's lost it, yeah. that right. he's lost 100k yeah. i mean there's there's an interesting dynamic obviously at this final table that's not at the heats which is that it's not a winner take all there's prize money it's laddering right. all the way up yep like and you know, you'd expect people to be a little conservative in the beginning toby lewis really show we know john's not good but toby lewis showing there that he's not scared to lose half his stack on the on the second pair yep Yep. That rock where all the well, there's no saying in poker. If you want to win, you got to be willing to die, right. you know, and you got to no. take some chances every once in a while. Well, he did so even on that very first pot, and I'm amazed that he called it check raise with the two nines. But he's obviously seen Duthie play a lot in his day. <laughs> he is. He's the kind of guy, John Duthie. He he comes as advertised, and yet still, if you're at the table with him. It's kind of scary, I think. Yeah, I was telling you, we played heads up in this right. championship match back in 2003. He'd already been the Poker Million champion, you know, so already had a legend. Check. Everybody was making prices on him, like $1.50 against me, you know. Right. And that had well. the battle, and I beat him. And now, as I watch him play, I feel better about knocking him down. Well, it's oh, incredible. He got the perfect card on the turn here. He, you know, he needs his opponent to catch up, and he got that oh, with this Oh, my gosh. Jack. And help, he's done so well to check twice here, yeah. hasn't he, behind? Okay, oh, now, now four jacks. Well, Duffy, sh he wow. could go all in. He could go all in. He could. To me, here's a case you make a big bet. Yeah. You're only going to get called if a guy's got an ace. Right. So you can move all in. He's going to call you with an ace just if you make a small bet. Correct. Right, well, he has bet double pot. But Very good bet. He must have a check. Guarantee you, how will this call will not raise with two aces here. And doesn't even want to make the call. That he shows you said how good he must he have a check, yeah. It feels like he's giving money away. He knows. He felt it. Wow, these guys are good. They are good. You how help is such a phenomenal poker player. <laughs> really is. Let me tell you Same something. something. I saw him early on in his career when he won the WPT event down in Aruba. Thanks. And I've seen him time and time again. And he's the one that knocked that me out of this tournament, I might add. Thing I couldn't really know that time. Yuha Helpy is going into this final. Sometimes it seems that you strike me as a as the quiet one who comes out and just wins absolutely everything. Are you feeling strong going into this? Yeah, I always feel strong when I start to play. The uh, reason why I'm quiet is usually I'm trying to study the players, see how they play. I maybe don't look that observant, but I always am. So when I kind of like understand their playing styles, I will adjust my game accordingly and try to win. Did you have a look at the lineup, figure out you know who's going to be at the table with you, and you know suss out their playing styles? Yeah, I studied the players a bit, so I know how they play. But it seems like an aggressive and tough table, so uh, I think everybody has a chance to win, and uh, there's no one that's a big favorite here. It's yet another final table for you too, one of these big TV tables, which is great. So how does it feel going towards this? It's really exciting to play in these TV final tables. I haven't won too many yet. I have like some second places, so I hope I don't get second today. Anything else is okay. okay well, good luck out there. Thank you. I think Duthie's bet size was wrong on the river there. I think when you get four jacks, you have to move in in that spot, basically. At least make a large bet. The guy's not going to call a small bet if right. he doesn't have an ace in his hand. Right. And it's hard to lay it down. Mike, you uh, were talking about beating John Duffy nice. heads up. I mean, now people actually know him mostly as a heads up player. He was second in the World Series of Poker head up bracelet event. And also and second. First on the, race. didn't he come in first on the? 25K yeah. online and a big heads up yep. event. So, um, well, the first thing any poker player will tell you, Pass. when you're playing an opponent, you know, Pass. you want to be able to put him on a hand. Well, nobody can oh. put John Duffy on a hand. Correct, once again, <laughs> jack six, off suit, you know? <laughs> when, there, like, will, there will come a he's point. Calling, but I mean, this is like, what is he doing? Well, well, but well, he, does, he gets results. It's a, where he's actually kind of maybe spewing off the chips a little bit. Well, I think you're doing it right now. I agree with opinion. Mike Sexton. This is just. It's, I think it's insane to play this hand. By the way, if you. if <laughs> Right I, now I, in this I, position with his chip count. I mean, why would he do it? I don't know. Just to steal. He's just thinking, no. He, he's operating on the dictum, no one connects. So therefore. I'll play and I'll bet, and based on the fact that no one connects. But I don't know. It's like now. Do you think he made this call because this is the guy that beat him in the last pot? Miles. A little he bit. He just wants to bluff him back. Is the revenge factor coming into play here already? Uh, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, for sure. But the problem is that call. he's playing the chip leader. But he's I mean, doing the float. Okay, he calls with absolute air. Yeah. Just thinking. The okay, any kind of straight card or a flush card is mine, and. All right. And there's his straight and flush card. So now John Duffy thinks, oh, but he actually picked up a draw. Another guy has now a jack-eye flush draw. But 
Duffy will. Well, as you know, in poker, it's not easy to make a call with no hand and no draw. <laughs> You're doing it to set up the steal on a later street. Yep. I, he checked, didn't he? And now the flush card comes off. And Lewis has the best hand with the jack eye flush draw. I don't see him going anywhere here. Nope, in this it's going to be a check call if, if Duffy makes a mistake here. Well, Duffy is wow. making a mistake. And he's going for some more chips. 16,000. Uh, this is just a snap call. Well, when the guy, he knows Duffy would have bet on the turn with a big heart in his hand, so no chance he got one of those. Look at this. He just reads his opponent as bluffing, and he shows the hand courtesy with great courtesy. A new tight yarn, Duffy. And the good part was checking on the river once he made the jack eye flush Absolutely. to give Duffy an opportunity to bluff at it, which obviously he did. Still part of the game. So Duffy's lost so much money with a 10 6 and a jack 6 to this guy already early on. Sort of mind boggling to me. Why you want to jeopardize chips like that? It's too spewy. I mean, well, Toby Lewis has really, he came in the runner up heat, second in his heat. Yep. Danced through that and is now walking on cloud nine here. Nice. Put, under, put under some pressure. Does John Duffy just look old? Is he really a 21-year-old? <laughs> yeah. You know, like these online guys that Young just continue to fire at everything? He looks like 14 to me at times. <laughs> like, look at his face right there. He looks 14 like he's caught stealing cookies or something. Mm. There it is. He won't stop. He won't stop. Well, there's not a hand he doesn't like. It's very obvious. Well, you know, the recent issue of a uh, European, uh, European poker magazine came out listing the most powerful people in poker. Nice. John Duffy, number 13, 16, I think, or number 14. Yeah, well, you know, he, he, he he's a brainchild, poker yeah, tour. brainchild right. behind, behind that whole thing. And what John was saying was the, the, the greatest thing was not being named number 14. It was that Phil Helmuth was 15. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Flop comes king, seven, deuce. Boy out in front with the two fours. But Hoy did this uh, yesterday with pocket sixes on a, on a king, seven, three board. He Check. just got really, uh, he wouldn't let it go. He won the pot. Kind of goes check, check. If Hoy checks again, I look for Duffy to make a bet. But Hoy going to beat him to it here with the two fours. It's very vulnerable here if he bets, isn't it? Especially into. 22,000. Well, Duffy's probably going to fold this one. Yeah, he gives it up. You do start out with plenty of chips, but Duffy down under a third of his starting stack. I mean, uh, about less than 200K right now. Well, Toby Lewis looking very impressive so far early on at this table, but I'll tell you, some of the talent that's at this table. You're right. Sam Trickett, Yevgeny Tempeshenko, Yuha Helpy. These are truly some of the greatest poker players in the world, folks. And if you get by them and win this heat, you deserve this title. Well, this will make you a better player right here. And you look down and find two yeah. kings. Oh, Dale Hoy. Uh, this is a late, a late position king raise, too. So Trick um, uh, Hoy may very well raise, considering himself to have the best hand. And he's well within his rights to, to make the little re-raise here, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, it blows off like the queen 10 nice. hands that aren't going to call that are actually races against you. Well, he has re-raised it to 22,000. I think that uh, Trickett's going to raise. I don't think he's going to. I always re-raise with the Me two too. kings in I the just spot. Re yeah. You're just the always guy's fearful, and ace pops out there, and now you're frozen oh, yeah. in the pot right. the rest of the way. And the guy might have queens, and you might get it all in right there. Also, you know, any of these guys who had checked out on Dale's form from his heat, he was pretty stubborn pre-flop with the, with the pocket, pocket pairs. Pocket sixes, yep. And... Uh, did want to peel off the flop with him, so Trickett might feel like it's a good time to pump the pot. This is exactly why middle pair is the toughest hand to play in poker. Because you've raised your partner to come back over the top, and now what do you do? You want to see a flop, do you call, do you fold, do you re-raise thinking the guy's got ace-king or just making a move at you? Very tough to play. And it's pair. a lot easier to make that raise with eights. If re he's re-raising, okay, so he's going to off himself here. But like when you raise with those eights, if you say yeah. re-raise, if you say if I get re-raised, what am I going to do? If you have the answer to that question before you make the first re-raise, it's a lot easier to make the correct play, whatever you thought it was, when the if 
You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Brandon. Well, Ola, I mean, the five bet is really polarized. I mean, two eights is essentially like having a three four when you make the five bet, really. Correct. I mean, you're only getting, yeah, it's true. I actually don't know what he's, what Hoy's left himself with. I guess he's left himself with a hundred. So therefore he has to go all in because the eights will be getting roughly four to one, even if he all of a sudden has a flash and sees that Trickett has kings. But don't worry. Am I right? Is that right? Would it be a, a one well, of those? Well, when you're sitting there with two kings, you're now starting to think, hey, does this guy really have well, two aces here? You're <laughs> right. five bet, right? I mean, you do think you're about it five very bet. strongly. No question yep. about it. But you're, you're right. I mean, it's either aces or a stone bluff, right? Or ace king suited. Sometimes people get super married to that hand. You just don't think somebody's going to come back over all the right. top of you. Well, he has gone all in. Now it's just a matter of Hoy saying, okay, what are the, do I have the maths to call for uh, the four? <laughs> and already he's feeling so does. good because the guy didn't make an instant right. call. He's, yeah, that's so a, that's now he's praying for the guy to call. <laughs> yeah, now he's praying. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you're right. And that's he's putting the him. ironic part about it. If a guy doesn't say call instantly, you know he doesn't have the two aces. You see he's got a problem. And now you want him to call. Yep. Well, it's 181 to call for it to win 410. He's actually not really getting that good a price. Anymore, no, it's an he? awful price, and he will. Call. All in and a call. It's well, called. he's called it with two oh eights. Oh, my gosh. So he's gambling early on at this final table. It's two kings versus two eights, and he knows he has fouled up this hand. Doesn't mean he can't get lucky and win it. Yep. That's why we love poker, because you can always suck out and hurt the guy, you know? Oh. Man, it's come jack 7-3, so he needs to catch an eight or two runners to make a straight. Uh-oh. Well, a 10 comes up. That's a good card for Hoy. Well, it gives him four more outs, as we say. A nine will win the hand for him now. He'll make a jack eye straight. So he needs a nine or an eight. Oh, that was upside down, Hoy there. That was close. Well, it was a three across club, but not the eight of clubs. They're going to count them down. Dale Hoy might actually have a couple chips left. He doesn't feel like he does. And he went with his, he went with his gut there. Just happened to come out on the wrong, the wrong side. Oh, highlights for me um, playing poker um, two years ago. Uh, went deep in the World Series, finished uh, 125th there. Um, that was a real roller coaster ride and a real buzz. Um, and in fairness, like the, the heat um, that we played um, uh, in this World Open, getting through that with the, with the quality of the field, and it was just amazing to be fair, and uh, I'm totally over the moon to be here today. The youngster boom in poker, I'm like, I feel like I'm one of, I could be fathers to many of these um, young kids, and um, it's certainly not something that I'd, I'd want to be taking up full time and taking on some of these whiz kids, because uh, they've just got to, the game's evolved so much over the last few years, and uh, they, they just put a new slant on the whole, concept of poker and um, I think I'm I think I'm pretty suited to sitting behind my desk at work and uh, I can instead of sitting behind a poker table. Welcome back to the final table of the world open. Just seven handed here. Pass. Look at this. this. Sam Trinket wow. has now picked up two aces, and there's a good chance everybody think he's just stealing pot. What are the rough odds that Yuha could go for a six bet shove all in <laughs> <laughs> with the sixes? He's just going for the set pedaling out of the gate. About a million. Well, this is what I do with small pairs, just yeah. like he's playing them. Pass. I don't re raise like a lot of these young yep. guys do. Me either. I take a flop off. Big guards come up. I don't lose any more money with this hand. And it costs so little typically, you know. It's six out of 300. It's what is that well, percent so wise? It's like when you have a small pair like this, dollars. you're actually wishing yeah. Yeah. that yeah. the guy that's doing the betting has aces or kings where he can't get away from the hand. Like that's what you're wishing for, ironically, that yeah. he's got you beaten, he's got aces, yeah. where if you flop your set, you can bust like, the guy. And by the way, another <laughs> benefit to just flatting yeah. with small pairs is when the board comes, uh, let's say, like this or if that was a four hearts, you, you can steal more often because you haven't identified what your hand is. You're, you're just, you could be in there with eight, ten, pocket sevens. Ten thousand. Here's a case where help has got to sort out. Is this guy making a continuation bet? Could he possibly have another big pair? He just had kings a minute ago. Everybody saw that. Yep. 
And this is a call. I mean, it's the same thing as when it came queen, rag, rag before and Duthy led into Toby. You, you kind of have to call that first bet to see what they do on the second bet. And you identified a tendency that Helpy had, Mike, uh, that he likes to test people on innocuous flops. He tested you early in the heat, but maybe his no, hand was too strong to give a tester or something. Wow, so he has eight, nine, yeah. ten outs now. He's just picked up uh, the straight draw. And this doesn't, this card does not feel good to anybody who has aces, never mind Sam Trickett. It's just like, well, you know. No, because you're just afraid. Six, eight, the, f uh, the guy called a raise before the flop. He didn't re-raise it, so you don't put him on a big pair. But he called, he must have something. And now you got these four middling little cards out there, right. and you're scared to death the guy might have flopped the set on you. Maybe, you know. You Trickett's hoping his opponent has 10 jack, or that's a reasonable hand that could call 000. a bet. I think it's a must call. I mean, as a general rule, very tough if you're a no limit hold'em player to look over at Yuha Helpy and think you're going to get his chips when you're holding one pair, right? I right. Mean, it's like, well, you call this, here, at the same but time, in reality, yeah. Helpy is also, you have to remember, Helpy thinks, okay, Sam Trickett's up to it. He's got a stack. He's just going to fire every pot, and he has that reputation. Helpy for sure doesn't think, oh, I'm against aces or kings. He's against a range of hands of which some over pairs are in there. That's why I think this is a call. Well, it's not that big a bet either. Not even half the size of the pot. Right. Cool. And Helpy doesn't want to be bet off his draw. You raise there, and then you're, you, you, you yeah, could get shoved off. Right? Yeah, for sure. So Helpy does make the call. If an eight comes up, though, I don't see him getting much action on the hand anyway. But now the deuce comes off. If I was Trickett and I had aces here, I would check call. Now, because p traditionally your opponent if he's got a draw, he might bluff at it. And if you bet, he, he's not going to call with a bluff. I mean, a, a draw that's missed. And no chance helping him bet if he checks. So this is this is strong because this is talking about getting value from your hand. I I don't typically make this play, and it's probably right because you're saying that Helpy has more no pairs in his hand than one pairs in his hand. No. He's going to call. Or he has. Or he's he has to check a pair right. in this spot if the guy checks to him. He figures he's not going to pay him off with ace queen or ace jack. So what's the purpose of betting? Would you bet there on the river with aces? I often I check call. You would aces. bet. See, yeah, I'm not getting enough value on my rivers. I think. Well, as long as help he's taken. If you're sitting in cricket seat, you are thrilled about it right now, and you're begging him to call you. Right at this point, it's a no-brainer. Tricket notes he's got him by the hook. Wow, look at this. He's good though, you guys, isn't he? He's not good. He's phenomenal. Yep. Play the hand in his heat against Sandra Noyax, where he worked out, he took his time, he just kind of worked out the exact two cards. It was by the river, obviously, but the, it was. This is just the great best. Card. It shows you how good this guy is. He never took a raise with that hand when he could have easily done so on the flop, on the turn. He could have called on the river, played the hand absolutely max as you can play it, even though he lost the pot. And it's really wise and good that Trickett didn't show that he had aces. He just, people are just, he, he knows, by the way, now if he looks down at ace 10, a hand that you might raise with in a format like this, he might say, well, I better slow down now because they know I'm rushing. They don't know that he's had these big hands, you know. So well, they saw the Kings, but that's the only hand they've seen so far. It's awesome. He's, he's really tortured this table so far. But the guys who aren't getting cards, it's amazing sometimes to see how they manage to stick around. I like the 6 3 raise on the button. Now here comes Tamashenko coming into his first pot. He's been waiting on the 6 high. <laughs> 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 these guys, uh, these uh, young guys, <laughs> Mike. I don't, but I mean, the thing is, it's not Jack Deuce. Six it. three of hearts is such a better hand than Jack Deuce off suit. It's ridiculous. Now, not in a race to the river where you know. How shocking is this? That that's John Duffy has ace ten of clubs and just calls here. He's been re-raising with the ten six, the Jack <laughs> five, the Jack six. Now all of a sudden he's got a legitimate hand, especially in the big blind when the button raises. And they both and have just have calls pair. and he flops top pair and checks. Tamashenko's got bottom pair. 
by the way, it's actually kind of so powerful if you think about what Timoshenko has done. I mean, Duffy had to give him credit for a big hand. And actually, if it comes a six or a three here, Whoops. I mean. Well, a three comes off. So John Duffy going to do his money here, just a matter of how much. He checked the check raise on the flop, but Timoshenko didn't go for it. He might go for a value bet right here. I think he's supposed to bet two tens with an ace kicker, and now he's going to get raised on the river. 17 passed. And this is going to be. Cool. Well, he's not raised. He put, he, uh, he's operating on the pr premise that, like, well, if I raise, I'm only getting called by a hand that can beat me. They're laughing. It was a funny sort <laughs> of hand. And, the, you know, it just shows what these guys are capable of, all, both of them. Duffy feels like he should have found a way to win that pot, shouldn't he? Well, he should have. He should have yeah. come over the top before the flop. He would probably won it right then without him seeing a flop. Once he flops top pair, he's going to fire again at the pot. Even if he gets called, he could better get on the turn. And he should have taken that Who? pot down Me. instead of losing it. Yeah. I could have been. Sam Trickett and Toby Lewis I, I'm familiar with. You know, they've been playing the circuit quite quite a while. I kind of sussed their style out. Uh, yeah, Genny, I know, obviously he's a formidable player who, you know, needs to be given you know, a certain degree of respect, but not too much. Yuha, Yuha I've known a long time, and I have played against Yuha. He's a, he's a funny old fish, really, isn't he? I mean, he's sort of, you know, he's very, very sort of stony-faced. He's a bit like uh, Kravchenko in, in many respects, except a little bit more miserable. Um, but he's a, he's a character, obviously a very, very good player. I feel very confident. I'm on, a, I'm on a reasonably good run in these. I won my heat in the late night poker. I won my heat in this. Uh, hopefully I'll go on to win it. Uh, that's my intention anyway. So we'll see. I, I feel quite bullish. I quite like, you know, it's, it's obviously I like winning still. You know, I'm, I'm very competitive and I like to win. Do you think what we're seeing here a little bit is just sort of, you know, s crazy things happen on final yes. tables because they're such big events. You know, you, they don't come around that often and, you know, sometimes people come in with weird game plans or, you know, nerves are a big Grace, part of it too. Yeah. Yep. And the television aspect of it. Uh, I mean, literally last week at, uh, in France it was in a big tournament and we were not on a televised table and there was this fella who was putting in between 50 and 100 big blinds pre-flop regularly. And then we went to the televised table. He didn't play a hand for four hours. Wow. It was the worst beat of all time. <laughs> it was like, because he didn't want to look, embarrass himself in front of his friends. Well, Robles raised it up front with an ace queen. Hoy's gone all in for his stack with an ace seven. And now Yuha Helpy, thinking Hoy's just a desperado here, looks down at the ace jack of diamonds. It's going to be interesting to see but, how he does. Yep. He's well, just worried that this is Robles' first hand, pretty much second, first hand. Was it his first or second? Second hand. He played the ace queen earlier. Right. And if if Helpy is going to play, are you calling or are you re raising here? You have to use chips. He could do either either one, honestly. You could justify either play. He might want to shut out. I mean, I can see that he's not supposed to because I can see, but I would actually, with ace jack and M's, I would flat call. I don't Let's know. Because you what have Andrew three, does. you're only putting in 10% of your stack. Oh no! Actually, I wouldn't do that. I didn't notice this. Yuha has 223. I would he not call. These, yeah. I would, would not call. Fold. If I had 300, I would probably call. But with 220, I would fold. What he's doing is he's trying to get a read off Andrew. I think. Right. He would love to call if that was it, because with the dead money in there, you know. And interestingly enough, I mean, if Yuha enters this pot in any shape or form. I don't think Andrew's going to be in love with the spot. You were about or, five, I don't know. What does Andrew think Yuha's on? What does it look like? Does it look like sevens or eights? Well, Yuha lays it down. He stops not to get involved with the ace-jack suited here. And I'm sure he didn't call just because of the threat of Robo coming back over the top of it. That was a lot of it, yeah. That was an excellent lay down, Yuha. It seems like yesterday to me. Dale Hoy, though, all in and at risk of being the seventh place finisher in this World Open six. And flop comes nine, six, deuce. So Hoy going to need some help here. He needs to catch a seven or two running cards to make a straight. 
Otherwise, he'll be out of here in seventh place. Or well, now six. Uh, That's a good card for yep, him. A nine or a deuce or a seven. They're all good cards. He gets a split pot if a nine or a deuce comes up. Doesn't happen as an eight comes off. So that's going to do it for Dale Hoy, and he's going to go home and be talking to himself. Why did I play those eights that strong? Well, he's got a lot of friends up here, uh, came on to support him on, and sometimes the best thing a friend can do at this spot is get you to the bar quick. You know? <laughs> It'll all feel better tomorrow. He's playing a good tournament. Yeah, just go have a couple pints and say, well, I made the final table. Anyway. 15000 for Dale Hoy. It cost 10000 to get in, so he showed a 5K profit and had a fun time. And uh, we'll have, you know, he'll definitely be staring at the ceiling tonight thinking about the eights. But other than that, <laughs> everything went well. <laughs> well, if you're at Duffy's table, he might bust you, but you enjoy playing with the guy. Yep. Mm. You know you get a chance to get yeah, some yeah, chips, yeah. and it's always entertaining. That's why I can't race. Well, the first time when you were talking about the Poker Million, uh, when everyone was watching, but all the people on the final table kept coming off and saying, man, that John Duffy, he's so tight, he must be picking up the hands. As John bluffed one by one them off the table and the million pounds. That was the last time they said that about him, but it was really incredible. Yes. He just bluffed and bluffed and bluffed and bluffed, and I was watching it in the other room with you and everybody else, of course, and Amarillo Slim was right next to me. And he was watching this, and his jaw just kept dropping open. He said, I can tell you one thing. He said, if they show this tournament down in Texas, there'll be a lot of Texans coming here next year. <laughs> the guy who gets spotted, aces, king. Trickets re raised this for the ace king, which is a no brainer raise. It's not good. And what you got. So it could be very good. One thing about Robo, when you play with him, I noticed it the other day, he talks about his hand and like tells you what he's got a lot yeah. of times, it seems like indirectly. And you can pretty well pick up on the kind of hand he's got just by listening right, to I'm the guy. I hope you have Ace King and the Ace or King doesn't come. <laughs> oh. Okay, that's pretty much. Uh, so it's going to be very hard for you to win the pot. <laughs> wow. I, I think that's, it's really interesting. What do you think? Is it effective <laughs> chat, Mike, or is it? Is well, it not going to get him paid? Well, you're sitting there, and the guy's telling you, well, I hope you get an ace king, and ace or king doesn't come on the flop. It's <laughs> exactly what he's got, and that's exactly what came on the flop. And if you don't have an ace king, you'll bet when a king comes. <laughs> right? <You're, laughs> which is maybe what Robles is thinking. He's thinking, now I've got him to bluff with tens, and maybe I'll steal it with a raise. It could, I mean, you're just burying yourself if you start thinking like this. But uh, Robles is going to throw this hand away for sure. <laughs> He is quite clever. He just. I think it's just better in the hole to chat yes, between. You know you have queens and I could bluff it. Just, ch just chat between the hands, not during the hand. Well, I'm gonna stick, stick to my original plan. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Sticking to the original plan. This is pretty interesting. You got lucky. Well, we played the first level. It's been rather entertaining. Sam yeah. is crushing it with 639, and Toby Lewis is semi-crushing it with 430. And then we got Yevgeny and Andrew pretty much level, and Yuha eh, a little hurt, and Don Duthie trying to get something going. Join us after the break for more from this exciting final for the Party Poker World Open 6 at the Palm Beach Casino. Welcome back. Final table action. One man down and one man very short in John Duthie, Phil. What has Duthie got to do? I mean, John Duthie's doing something that is traditionally really bad in poker. Not betting when you have hands and betting when you miss. It's fun. Yeah, bet when you miss occasionally, but always bet your hands because that's... Well, we saw him lose a pot with ace-ten of clubs. One of the best hands he had when he should have won that pot. Yeah, the blinds are two and four thousand now. Duthie only put in five, I think. Go the call. Yes, the call. It's less than half. Don't worry, I should pay attention. I think they're going to make this a call. That's if it's less than half the bet. No right. And that's because the blinds just went up. The two and four thousand. Wow, this is this is it's really worked out for John here. If he raises, Toby Lewis. Re raises or could anyway. And flop comes king nine seven. Great flop for Toby Lewis there. I mean, I really believe 
there's no amount of cleverness that can help you out by raising with junk cards in the first couple of spots. You just have to play tight because you, people wake up with hands behind you. Case in point right here. Now, you high help. He has a two way straight draw. He's let out in bed. Lewis has, to, I mean, <laughs> monster hand and John Duffy is lucky that there's going to be action in front of him so he can get away from his hand. But if it was heads up, you might lose some chips with the pair here. I mean, would, why didn't Lewis raise? You, uh, would you have made <coughs> I would have for sure. Me too, yeah. Very puzzled why he didn't raise there, but now Jack comes off. Now Helpy will go into neutral probably, even though that card helped his hand. They gave him more outs, he'll check call probably. But he knows that Lewis called oh. a bit before the flop, but you know, going to lead out in bed here. The guy didn't raise him on the flop, so you're not putting him on a king, maybe. Yeah, and ace, two of diamonds, who knows, you know. Might be putting him on some type of draw or a middle pair. Or now you think the jacks might be the best hand. You think everybody's going to raise if they flop top pair and you lead out in bed, but that didn't happen here. Oh. Now Toby Lewis is just calling again because he's fearful now. Now he's afraid if he raised, he'd only get called by a hand that beats him. And now a hand beats him. Well, the queen comes off. Helpy has made the straight. I think a, a bet of 40 or something here is good. Okay. Oh, wow. I, don't, I don't like that. You, you got to get value from your hands when you make them. I mean, this is a, just a, a snap check by Toby. It, it's almost like Yuha has put Toby Lewis squarely on uh, a flush draw, like right. a high flush draw or a low flush draw. And he's checked it down, and I agree with Phil completely And there. now look at Toby doesn't even have to show that he had a monster. He gets to keep that camouflage as well. Well, you how help he did make a bad mistake there by not betting on the river, I think. I don't know that he was right. going to pay it off anyway. Because against the range of your opponent's hands, yeah, he might have a flush draw, but that's not a high enough Toby. bandwidth to that's justify so the check. Almost it. Uh, yeah, it would have been a value bet there. <laughs> value bet. Oh. Well, Toby Lewis just slow played that hand until they lost it. Like Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, basically, that's what it came down to. I played it a hundred before. It's, Never took an aggressive stand with an ace king before the flop, on somebody, the flop, on the turn. <laughs> like you go back like twenty percent of the pot. Nah. Wow. Yeah. That's kind of fun. Robles is talking about a game in Texas where when you beat a guy, you give him I'm part like, of the I pot. I got pot. some rebates, and then I bad beat a guy, and I was like, no rebates. Right to eleven. I'll play get back poker. Robo gonna raise it up here with a jack eight of diamonds. So if I beat and you guys, didn't get if, shot. if I beat you guys in this pot, there's gonna be no get back. <laughs> they get call shot, it a huh? get back in Texas. Get shot. <laughs> Have you heard of that, Sexton? Yeah, get not. back the from get the door. Back. I've got a gun. That's what it is. <laughs> get you, back. Better, you better just hope you get back home alive. I'm not. I don't know about to get back or give back or <laughs> get back from the door and leave your money on the floor. <laughs> oh, boy. Now I am petrified. Look at this. Now. Trickett is re-raised re with a four so high here. Now it's down to, down I to the four I think Rojo just again. talked to himself and said, you get nothing back with this hand, indicating he's stealing this pot. He's going to be proud of keeping that money. Trickett picked it up and has re-raised him here. Well, you guys were both onto this right away. You said this Andrew Roble might be giving away too much information to Sam Trickett with all his talking. And Trickett's played him perfect. And now... Yeah, he's just, he's not really talking to anybody. He's just kind of talking general conversation during the hand. It's like bad unless you're well-versed and expert or your opponents are predictable and maneuverable, et cetera. Just these guys, you don't want to do that. I really don't have much of an option. Wow! I think he's re-raised. He did. He's with this a, with a, a bold <laughs> play right here. <laughs> with the speech. I don't have much of an option. Oh, you got to love these sick people. Well, Trickett's poker instincts are as good as anybody's I've seen in a while. But it's Trickett's thinking, am I against Ace King? That's what it feels like when somebody says, I really don't have any option. You right? Know, Doesn't it feel like that if I had to guess what a guy had? <laughs> with, not, I don't guess jacket at diamonds. I guess a real... Trickett says, how much are you playing? He might just put him on Ace King and move forward with the hand from there. That hey, would be sick. Andrew's actually gone quite quiet <coughs> here, hasn't he? Is he quiet because he's nervous or quiet? I thought because he was he's talking too much, giving his strength of his hand away. Trickett picked up on it, came over the top of him. And now with the last speech, I don't have much choice. Nobody's going to say that if we've got two aces. <laughs> Correct. And he went all in. Oh, my. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. 
It just is amazing, folks, how good this kid is. Let me tell you something. I spotted it the other day. I tell you, I'm so impressed by this guy, it's unbelievable. But I believe it was all the chit chat by Robo that cost him that pot. You, he saw through it that I really don't have just much choice. It seems weak when somebody talks like that, right? He just, I mean, he just destroyed him. Oh, I mean, well, it's high. the classic poker tale. When they're trying to represent strength, they're usually weak. When they're whistling Dixie and looking the other way, they're usually strong. Everything going right for Trickett so far. The young guns, look at them. Tim Oshenko, Toby Lewis, feeling fine. Yuha Healthy and John Duthie experienced and only a level and a half in, but they're going to have to get their groove on sooner or later. This incredible final table promised much and it hasn't disappointed. Join us next time here at the Palm Beach Casino as we get one step closer to learning who will be crowned the champion of the Party Poker World Open 6. Oh, oh my, my God. God, that was sick. Can you believe this? Oh my Lord. <laughs> Temoshenko's never that seen That's it all right there, Temoshenko's face. Well, in many casinos, that would be worth a seven-figure bad beat payout. Oh my Lord.